Welcome to Monsuko Production Standard Training, Module 7, Principle 4, Actively Managed Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, Criteria 4.3 and 4.5, and Principle 5, continuously, continuously Improve Other Key Areas of the Business. This is the last of seven uh, modules, uh, the Module 7, one for Introduction and seven for the Monsuko Production Standard. Now we will see the structure of, of the training material. Here in this slide we will have the information from the Bonsuko production standard. So outside the criterion, of course, here the indicator and the indicator description. Here the scope, yes, mill agriculture or if it's the whole supply area. Here the core indicator, or if we don't have that, is because this is not a core indicator, so to identify it. Now we have the standard and the metric indicator here. And of course, in this place, you can see the description of the full indicator requirements exactly as it is on the Monsucro production standard. Here on this slide, we have a summary of the implementation guidance. So the scope as defined in the guidance, the objective as defined in the guidance, and here uh, a guidance description summary uh, for this, for this implementation uh, guidance. Some slides or some indicators need uh, context concepts. So context concepts to better understand, to better understand uh, some, some points uh, or some concepts like maybe uh, living ways, social dialogue, uh, risk assessment. So we have some uh, slides on, on, in this place, some of some of the indicators not need that uh, concept, context concepts. Others will need. And at the end, we have the indicator auditing guidance. Uh, this is a summary of the auditing guidance. So we will have first uh, the bone sucrose production standard. Second, the implementation guidance to understand how to implement uh, some concepts in the middle, and third the auditor guidance, how to audit, how to audit this indicator. This is the end of the, of the structure for each indicator on the training material. From this moment, the camera will be closed. Please enjoy the training. Thank you so much. So welcome to module four, actively manage biodiversity and ecosystem services in the second part. We continue with this principle that have five criteria. We continue with criteria 4.3, water stewardship plan in place. We'll continue after with the 4.4, peace diseases and weed management plans in place and implemented. And with 4.5, to ensure hazardous chemicals and materials do not negatively impact biodiversity and ecosystems. Well, also we continue with principle five in this module. So we start with a this indicator 4.3.1 of six indicators on this criterion. The operator identifies the main water resources and catchment areas. This is for mere agriculture and especially these indicators is also for the whole supply area. So the idea is to identify the greatest extent possible, the, of course, the water resources, including catchment areas, basin, subbasin, and microbasin. Of course, the level of availability of, or maybe water stress to map other uses uh, that utilize this catchment and also uh, to map that local water initiative and list uh, inside, uh, or inside yeah, uh, the organizations involved in water management here. So that mapping requires some resources. Of course, first of all, identify the catchment of the rivers around the company. So, for example, here we can see a map. We can have see two catchment areas. And we could identify here, here the mill. What are the catchments? What, what are the main users in the catchment? Yes, and mapping them. And list uh, in the side, of course, uh, that organizations and users that are in this catchment and that will maybe uh, that we need to communicate between us to, to, to have a better uh, 
water stewardship on this. So first of all, the mapping, the mapping of the catchments, we need some resources from GIS, uh, and of course, topography maybe in the area, some uh, international mappings, so regional mappings can, can help to construct that uh, catchment areas uh, in the, of course, for the mill, and also including the supply chain in the area. From the auditing point of view, uh, the auditor need to be sure that the map exists, how they construct the map, how they raise the, the information, uh, if, if who made the map, uh, if the map had been done by the, by the GIS. So uh, to identify that, uh, of course, uh, water levels of stress, uh, and verify that the map covers the whole cane supply area, also is very important that they identify maybe cross crossing back with the 4.1.1 uh, with the map of covers and be sure that that, that catchment are, have been identified in the cover. Of course, the water stress is so important to identify for the auditor to be sure uh, who are the users, what was the importance of the water uh, in the region, where the water comes, uh, if there are industrial uses or, or, or communities around there that use that water. Uh, so that points are very important for the auditing to identify that problematics in the map. The second indicator, 4.3.2, the operator develops and implements a water stewardship plan. This is a core indicator for meal and agriculture. Of course, uh, the operator de develops that plans with all the requirements of a plan in the one super production standard, and that plan needs to be revised at least every every three years or sooner as per company procedures. From the implementation point of view, that plan needs to be uh, built by the contract, constructed by the company. So achievable actions, so records of use, meetings, trainings, what are the actions that that plan needs to do? Agreed responsibilities, who is the person responsible for, for, for this uh, project, who is the person or the department responsible for this project and to, to, to generate that plan or to implement that plan. Time frames and allocated resources. What are the times to what? So what indicators will be controlled to? So, and what resources will need this person to comply with the plan? So that need to be clear on this plan. And of course, on this area, partnership and collaborations, NGOs, governments, other mills, other users, other agricultural crops, other industries uh, that are using that and that we need to meet with them and to, to construct that plan with some indicators, objective, etc. Of course, taking account what's the catchment, is the, is the zone, the ge geographical zone where, uh, where all the raining comes to the same river, so to, to, to the river of use. Of course, we are talking also with underwater catchments that also from a few meters to 100 meters for, for users for uh, underwater catchments, of course, that can have maybe other dynamics, but need to be also included uh, in some way on this. That need, of course, more information to map that catchments and, and, to, and to understand where that catchment goes uh, and what is the impact of the use, uh, how, how this water return to the catchment, uh, to, the, to, to the basin, to the internal basin, and how it works. But uh, the importance is to have a plan to understand the dynamics uh, and to have that kind of meetings and agreements and objective uh, with, with all the users in the catchment. So, of course, uh, that plan uh, need to take into account the risk, uh, the hazards in the ident identification, the assessment of risk, the gradient of that risks and impacts, the plans and measures implemented to evaluate that risk. That need maybe uh, external resources to construct this plan, or maybe internal resources with some guidance on what that guidance on what are to our ship plans. But uh, the, the core of the point is to understand what are the dynamics, uh, how this plan identify their risk, and how to construct the objective and, and the plan at the end. Now, from the auditing point of view, uh, first of all, to be sure that the map, the, the plan exists, the water stewardship plan that is updated, and it means that is for at least 36 months. Uh, of course, to verify cover activities, uh, to be sure 
uh, that crosses the plan with the mapping of water resources. Uh, of course, and, and evidence of implementation of the of the water stewardship plan uh, to be sure that 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 that, that plan exists, that all the communication with uh, stakeholders in the plan is there, and of course that, that is correlated with the map uh, that comes from 4.3.1. So that mapping correlates with the with the with the stakeholders in the user user in the catchment, and that that plan has, of course, activities and records of implementation. The 4.3.3. The operator promotes sustainable water use by engaging in collaborative actions. This is a minor indicator. And of course, especially when there are water stress, but not only, uh, it needs to be clear that he's uh, uh, engaged in that collaborative and collective actions to promote that sustainable water use and that the company participates with other water users for government and civil society in catchment or aquifer water planning and management, including how to allocate water equitability and without conflict, of course, in this process. This is the indicator, close related also with the mapping and close related with the, uh, with the water stewardship plan. Clearly, close with the water, close related with the water stewardship plan. Uh, the operator need to participate on that local and community initiative and activities to 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 maintain and to improve the the, the, the water resource. So keep records of these uh, measurements, for example, of water stress, and take collaborative actions uh, to reduce it. So uh, naturally, coming with the plan, you need to be engaged on that. Uh, initiative and engage on that opportunities to 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 control and to improve uh, the, the water access and the water catchment from the auditing point of view the auditor need to of course again take the map take the water stewardship plan and be sure that that plan has some initiative uh, to implement in collaboration with the communities to to improve uh, to promote that sustainable water use um, of course, the auditor need to be clear on the records, photographies, uh, records of assistance uh, to, for, for this kind of plan. Uh, also, of course, communication with stakeholders and, and catchment users in the, in the area. The fourth indicator is 4.344 of this criterion. The operator maximizes water efficiency per mass of product. This is for mil, of course, and there are indicators for the calculator. So the indicator is for kilogram of water per kilogram of mass product. So uh, less than 20 kilograms of water for kilogram of sugar only, or less than 30 kilogram of water per kilogram of mass pr product per, for ethanol in this case. So water consumed at mil, water is less water return to the environment and of course if effluents are exported by the mill to the fields for irrigation the mill accounts for it as water return to the environment in this case from the implementation point of view uh, the, the most important point here is to maintain the records of use of water uh, to be sure that the company maintain records uh, that the meal effluent should be returned to crops for irrigation. What are the quantities of this uh, return to for irrigation for the crops? And of course, if there are no exactly metrics uh, to have uh, average uh, or, or information that can be accessible for the for the for the for the user to include in the in the calculator. Uh, to be clear, that information comes from the calculator and is cross. Uh, and is uh, produced by the all the volume of product and all the volume of water used uh, in the meal. From auditor point of view, the, the, the auditor need to trace that information to be sure that the information comes from uh, real uh, measurements. Who take the measurements? How he takes it? And if the measurements are are, are correct. So if they have instruments to measure the water use, 
how they use it, how they record it, and how they take out also after that information through the calculator at the end. Of course, in case of mill reuse, the mill reference for the crop irrigation, uh, request also for that respective recourse, and again, verify the source of the data reported for the calculator. Indicator 4.3.5, the operator maximize irrigation productivity, is a new indicator uh, for agriculture, of course, and it's an indicator about water productivity. So uh, it means what's uh, has the productivity of that additional water that have been included in the in the field to grow sugarcane. We have so uh, the the actual yield and net irrigation pay over the growing season will determine actual water productivity value that need to be more than uh, the relationship that the, the benchmark water productivity that is what WUPO. So the, that indicator includes, of course, the, the rain uh, in the area and it could how the additional water uh, give a net additional value and productivity uh, to the production. So it's an interesting new indicator. Now, from the implementation point of view, um, uh, the, the, the operator needs to take into account all the raining information. That's so important for agriculture. So you know, that one millimeter of raining equals 10 meter, cubic meter of per, per hectare. So uh, taking into account the raining, we'll have the, the WPO. Uh, and of course, we'll take into account the irrigation information uh, to be sure if that irrigation of additional effort uh, is, of course, more than the rain. Uh, all the calculations is included here uh, are included here are, are done by the calculator. So uh, here, the more important in the implementation point of view is the traceability of the information of raining and of course the information of water that is applied uh, to the to the fields. So now from the auditing point of view, of course, uh, it's important to know the rainfall records expressed, expressed in millimeters, who take that record, how that record has been taken, uh, what's the traceability of this information, how this information uh, is included in the, in the calculators. Of course, also records the water inputs to the crops, uh, both for irrigation, of course, or cycled water from the from the mill, and records water collection records according to the meters available at the mill. So the flow meters, etc. So this is important records of rainfall, records of water included in the in the in the, in, in, in the field that are uh, accurate on the information and traceable with the information. We finish this criterion with the indicator 4.3.6 that says that the operator minimizes detrimental effects of waste discharge. So this indicator is applicable to the mill only, and we have three standards that apply. This is one or another or another. So the first one that the operator can choose work with is the results for dissolved oxygen. So at least the results should be 2.5 ppm for DO. Alternatively, uh, the operator can choose to work with COD results, and the standard required is less than one kilogram of COD per tons of a product produced. And the third option is work with VOD results, so the standard required is less than 2.5 sorry, 0 0.25 kilograms of BOD per ton of product. So this uh, indicator uh, works with dissolved oxygen. That is an indicator of the quality of oxygen available in the receiving stream to support life. So it's important to remind that sampling for DO should be carried in the receiving stream. However, if the operator choose work with COD or DO, uh, BOD results, the sampling should be carried in the discharge point. From the implementation point of view, the most important is, of course, to take the analysis 
of uh, the dissolved oxygen, COD, or BOD. It uh, depends on, of course, the availability of uh, laboratories in the area. And of course, to be sure that that analysis is taken in the, in the good manner and in the good moment too. Uh, the idea is to be sure that that discharge is in the good parameters uh, and to be sure that the pe periodicity is correct. From the auditing point of view, uh, the auditor should review the procedure to, to, to take that uh, samples, uh, to be sure when the sample has been taken, who take that samples to have records of this, uh, what, which laboratory uh, uh, analyze the samples? Uh, this laboratory have the credentials to to do that, and to be sure that uh, all is correct and the information is correct. We pass now to uh, criterion 4.4: pest disease and weed management plans in place and implemented. First of four indicator uh, of this criterion, 4.4.1, uh, the operator identifies and monitors current historical and potential pest and disease. This is for agriculture, it's an indicator, and the operator identifies current historical and potential pests, including weeds affecting the fields, and where appropriate, defining for each the threshold when control of pests become necessary. So, of course, it needs a uh, field monitoring uh, of the health of, of the plant uh, and beneficial organisms to identify on the first steps that pests and disease are, of course, and maybe weeds that need uh, management on this area, identification. So here the idea is to understand what are the potential pests in the area to identify them and of course the potential weeds that, that can of course change for different areas. Some areas can have more than other ones, but uh, we need to have the identification of all. Uh, of course, also historical. Why? Because that historical can maybe appear in the future. So of course that needs a monitoring, constant monitoring, that needs to have a document uh, that identify and describe uh, all of these weeds, pests, and disease uh, on this area. It's a, it's a real document that where we identify that uh, information. So the records of historical uh, current and potential pests, of implementation of field monitoring methodologies to identify those pests. So what's the field? What are the procedures? Who is in charge of this? And of course, records of plant symptomatology caused by pests of disease. Uh, that recourse will, uh, will allow maybe to, to add new disease, new space, new, 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 new weeds, um, of course, to identify them on a record. From the auditing point of view, the idea is to, to be sure to identify, first of all, that, that document that identify pest disease and weeds exists. Uh, who does this document? Uh, how this document is uh, updated, uh, how the monitoring have been made, who made the monitoring, uh, what's the procedure to make the, the monitoring, and of course, very important, who trained the person who made the monitoring to be sure that he can identify the pest and disease on the field. Uh, the trainings are very important for monitoring pest and disease. So to be sure that he, this person is trained and that we have records of training of this disease. Indicator 4.4.2, the operator implements with pest and disease management practices. This is a core indicator. Of course, that need a plan, a plan that identified agronomic, biological, and chemical strategies appropriate to that with pest and disease identified in 4.4.1. Of course, the plan, as all the plans in the Bonsuko production standard, shall define a plan with achievable actions and objective monitoring activities, agreed responsibilities, time frames, and allocated resources, and we need to update every three years at least. Um, so it's a plan to reduce the impacts uh, and at the end uh, to reduce the use of agrochemicals. 
So from from the implementation point of view, now that that in the four point four point one we have the identification of that pest disease and weeds. Now it's important to describe what are the prevention activities or agroecological strategies to to prevent uh, the use, of course, of chemicals in the future. After what all the the uh, the, the practical uses, the, the, the practices to implement, uh, of course, no chemicals uh, to prevent that, uh, that uh, uh, pest and disease. Manual removal, uh, selective tillage, selective application of herbicides, uh, it, it, it needs to be after. So uh, after biological herbicide need to be before the uh, agrochemical, and at the end the agrochemical is the last option to prevent Best disease and weeds uh, that need to be registered. Of course, also to take in account, uh, the herbicide should be based on action or using risk based approach. There need to be included on this plan a uh, risk approach of uh, identification of pests, assessment of risk, gradient of risk and impacts, and plans and measures implemented. Uh, to manage the risk, so so the the risk approach is very important on this on this uh, plan uh, for for weed pest and disease management. From the auditing point of view, uh, now that the monitoring are in place, the identification are in place, it's important to be sure how the plan is constructed, who construct the plan, yeah, uh, and, and to be sure. What are the limits included in this plan when the application of agrochemicals need to be uh, mandatory uh, because the disease, the pests, and weeds have economic impacts? So uh, it's important to be sure that that parameters are okay, that are constantly uh, rev revised, or at least every 36 months have been uh, have a review to be sure that they are correct. Uh, and there is a new, uh, a continuous improvement process. Of course, the the, the implementation of this plan, of this plan in the in the in the in the field uh, need to be uh, consistent with what is written in the, in the plan. Of course, field of observation of the implementation in the field uh, need to be in the same than the than the monitoring uh, and that taken in the plan. This is all linked to the third indicator. Uh, that was in the the last Bonsuco production standard, the 4.4.3, the operator maximized the efficiency of agrochemicals applied. This is a core indicator, less than five kilogram active ingredient per hectare per year. And this is uh, an indicator to minimize air, soil, and water contamination, particularly of site impacts. Uh, it need to uh, account the, the quantity of active ingredients of agrochemicals, uh, including, of course, pesticide, herbicide, insecticide, fungicide, nematicides, repairs applied, and use only products registered for the use and that register rates uh, and use them in accordance with label directors. Of course, uh, it needs to sh it need shall have the average of application rate over the total treated area in this case. Again, less than, less, than, less than five kilogram of active ingredient per hectare per year. Now, from the implementation, it's important to take, of course, uh, some records of the application uh, as a basics for the indicator. So the date of application, the active ingredient for each application, the quantity of product, the area of application, the responsible persons, and the cost of application to, to be sure that it straight back with the, with the plan. Uh, of course, that records need to be of the quantities of active ingredients applied and must not exceed that five kilogram active ingredient per hectare per year. Uh, and this is the final uh, information that need to be included in the input data in the calculator. Um, so, of course, the calculations before need to be traceable uh, 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 and the operator need to have that information included in a, in a pre-document before the input data. So, uh, of course, it's normally the, the, the research, registration is per plot. The template should allow the record of how much each active substance is used, 
uh, an adiot of the priority amount of kilogram or tons used in the total area is added at the calculation per hectare that is made. Um, taking account the area used, and to be clear that this is an average uh, of total area uh, treated. Now the auditor first of all will see the calculator to be sure that the information is correct, the indicator is correct, less than 5 kg per hectare. After, he will go back uh, with the input data to be sure that the information included is the uh, active ingredient, uh, how this uh, base data comes from, uh, who made the registration, how the registration has been made, and if all this information maybe is uh, crossed back uh, with the list of agrochemicals that are out from the storage and the amount of agrochemical per year that have been used uh, in the storage records, in the storage records to, to cross back with this information. So do, the, the, the auditor need to cross back uh, from the indicator uh, calculation in the calculator uh, to the field records and how that field records comes to the calculator. Indicator 4.4.4, the operator only applies legal and safe agrochemicals. This indicator applies to agriculture scope only, and it is a core indicator. The standard required by this indicator is zero kilograms of active ingredient per hectare per year, meaning that, that no active ingredient that are on those lists here in this indicator can be used by the operator. So this indicator presents seven lists of banned agrochemicals uh, that includes active ingredients that cannot be used. So these lists are uh, the pesticides formulations that meet the criteria 1A and 1B of the World Health Organization, the pesticides and active ingredients that meet the criteria, criteria of carcinogenic categories 1A and 1B of the globally harmonized system, the GHS, those that meet the criteria of mutas mutagenicity uh, categories 1A and 1B of uh, GHS, those that meet the criteria of reproductivity toxicity categories 1A and 1B of GHS, those listed on the Stockholm Convention in its annex, Annexes A and B, and those in the paragraph 1 of Annex D, those uh, listed in the Rotterdam Convention in its Annex 3, and those pesticides listed under Montreal Protocol. As an exception, of course, in case where there are no ban alternative, but that, of course, they need to be allowed and registered for use in the country of use, uh, our research need to be conducted to, 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 to document and to determine and to take into consideration that this is the last alternative in this case. Uh, of course, this risk management must be updated to control the risk arising from the applying a potential dangerous dangerous chemical, and of course to have a plan to phase out or eliminate that use by agrochemicals. They need to be, of course, also crossed back with the uh, weed, manage, weed pest and disease management plan uh, to this continuous look of alternative of that ban agrochemicals. From the implementation point of view, it's important to be sure which agrochemicals are allowed in the country. And first of all, uh, to be to be, to be clear that uh, only a lot in the country agrochemicals can be used. Um, after, it's important to be clear that the list here of agrochemicals uh, are also, uh, the, 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 the agronomist team knows that list and the people who is charged to purchase uh, that agrochemicals also know that list to be sure that, that there are controls to not recommend that that uh, that agrochemicals and also a control to not purchase 
uh, that are chemical in the case of the agronomists don't have that prevention. Uh, of course, uh, to be aware that when national legislation goes against, against one of the international conventions, uh, by allowing uh, only ban agrochemicals or when no no ban alternative is allowed by legislation, uh, as said before, the national legislation should be complied with. So this is the this is the first point before to allow to go to a ban agrochemical in the case of exception. From the auditor point of view, first of all, to see the calculator uh, to be sure if the uh, operator uh, registers some ban agrochemicals. If yes, uh, they need to to see what's the plan, what's the exceptional plan and the justification of these ban agrochemicals and to be sure that uh, that agrochemical is allowed in the country. Uh, if there is nothing in the calculator, uh, the operator need to go also to uh, the registered agrochemicals uh, in, the, in, the, in the storage uh, to be sure that any registered agrochemical used or stored uh, is in the bonnet uh, list. Also, to talk with the process people to ensure that they are, are aware and to talk with the uh, agronomist team charged to the recommendation to be sure that they are also aware of that list and that they know that they cannot recommend any of this without a clear justification and to be sure that it's allowed in the country. Finishing with the last criterion 4.4, we now pass to the 4.5 to ensure hazardous chemicals and materials do not negatively impact biodiversity and ecosystem services. This is the first of two indicators on this uh, criterion. 4.5.1, the operator safely managed storage facilities and disposed safely of chemicals, fuels, lubricants and other hazardous materials. Of course, all of these materials need to be safely stored, access is restricted to the sole users, and they are ventilated and allowed for spillage management, so just retention point, uh, that also need to comply with legal requirements, uh, and the operator must ensure that these are stored securely on its supply farms, of course, uh, through uh, recommendation and ensure that these materials are safely managed and disposed and of course that they are prevention for the environment and for the people uh, in this storage. So storage needs to be included of course in the, uh, in the impact assessments to be sure that the, the, the operator uh, have that assessment of the risk of the storage, that the storage are designed in a way to retain spillage from that hazardous materials, that agrochemicals are uh, storage uh, alone from other uh, oils and other products, and of course to be sure that that storage comply with the legal legislation in the country too. So ensure safe storage that no uh, that no, no people, no persons can go in this storage that uh, or the access is limited, and of course adequate bio bed for the final disposal of spill agrochemical when uh, it happens. Uh, the the rotation cases need to be closed to be sure that if there is an accident uh, of spill, it, it doesn't go to the aquifers of to the of to the or to the nature. So all of these design uh, need to be clear need to be assessed by the company and they need to be aware uh, also not only of environmental criteria but also uh, health and safety criteria. So the auditor will need to go to the storage, we need to review the storage to evaluate the risk, to see and follow the, the risk of spillage, what are the uh, retentions, what are the training for the people for the retention to be sure uh, that there is the areas are locked, closed, that the floor was and shelves are okay. Of course, that the, there is a, a, a illumination, a appropriate signage, a, a, a agreed with the legal legislations, and of course, again, a, the hazardous material need to be stored securely. A, to be sure that 
uh, fuels are stored secure uh, with the respective distance uh, with accommodations or offices uh, and need to be clear that agrochemicals are also uh, store, uh, have a, a independent storage uh, in the, independent from oils, uh, fuels, lubricants and of course uh, tools for, for the people. The last indicator on this criterion and on this principle 4.5.2 the operator trains workers on handling and correct use of farm chemicals fuel and hazardous material uh, this is for me an agriculture and the standard is yes it's a non-core indicator and all workers that handle or come into contact with that farm chemicals fuel or hazardous material are trained of course the person who store the person who apply and the person who transport, of course, need to be included there. So the training is conducted by competent professional on a safe management of the substance. It's specific on the re relevant task. An explanation of the name from relation toxicity and, of course, of the relevant information on the MSDS uh, information uh, to chemical is included. Techniques for correct handling of this substance, correct use of PPE, very important to be sure that the person know what PPE need to use to each agrochemical product, preventative measures for reducing possible damage to health and the environment caused by the substance in case of accidents, and of course, the emergency producers and fee state and medical cares need in these cases. Records of training are maintained where appropriate on an individual basis. So it's important that uh, uh, to be sure the operator record uh, what, which training have each uh, worker uh, and keep all of use of farm chemical fuel hazard materials and reports. Our records are of course accurate, complete, up to date and accessible. And finally, all records shall be kept for a minimum of two years. Now, from the implementation point of view, agrochemicals need to have specific training. Uh, uh, the, the operator need to be sure that what are the uh, requirements on the legis local legislation for the use agro of agrochemicals to be sure if there is not a need of a specific uh, a training on this. Uh, of course, uh, provides proper training uh, uh, to be sure that the person who made the training does in a, in a good way is competent to do the training and there is an evaluation uh, of this training. Uh, the use of PPE need to be part of this training to ensure that each agrochemical uh, use the correct PPE in relationship with the MSDS uh, and to be sure as an operator that all the person who is in contact with this agrochemical, including storage and transport, uh, are included on the trainings, on these trainings, and that people who use agrochemicals can read, of course, and can understand the risk of the use of these agrochemicals. Uh, of course, the same for use of fuels or, or lubricants, uh, different PPEs, different uh, cares, but also the same uh, trainings to be sure that they, they, they use that uh, products in a safe way. So, of course, keep records of all use of farm chemical fuel as well those materials and reports. Records are accurate, complete and up-to-date and accessible. Our records should be retained to be sure to retain all records and maybe not only for all the course of trainings, at least uh, for two years. Now, from the auditing point of view uh, the auditor need to be sure that the what are the legal requirements of trainings but the auditing goes also to the field uh, to evaluate in the field the use of that PPE uh, to the, the interview with the workers that are using the agrochemicals to be sure that they use it correctly and there is linked with the MSDS and of course that there is training records as he expressed on the interview so what are what are the training records of course uh, uh, done uh, to cross to ch cross check uh, th that interview with the trainees and to be sure also that people who 
storage, transport, and also applies agrochemicals are uh, uh, are uh, uh, trained on this. Of course, to be sure that the use of fuels, transport, and use of fuels and oils and lubricants are correct, and to be sure that these people have also trained. It's very important that the workers that use agrochemicals can uh, understand the risk, can read to read the MESDS, and to be sure that they know how to act, what is, what is the emergency plan in case of accident. We continue now with principle five, continuously improve other key areas of the business. This last principle have four criteria. 5.1, to promote economic and social sustainability. 5.2, to reduce emissions and effluence to promote recycling of waste streams where practical. To train workers and other workers in all areas of their work and develop their general skills. And 5.4, continuous improvement of workers' welfare. This criterion has one indicator, 5.1.1, the operator ensures value is maximized per ton of cane. This is for meal and agriculture, and the standard is more than $14 per ton of cane for the meal, and more than $10 for, per ton of cane for the agriculture. So value added uh, is the value of sales less the price of the goods, raw materials, good in energy and service purchased. Of course, taking account of the inputs and outputs uh, of the meal and taking account the cost for the agriculture. And it's important to understand that this calculation is not uh, as profit. Uh, the operator should estimate the added value of the operation. So in the case of grow growers, for example, the can sales less the cost of inputs and the quantity of tons produced. So it shows include subsidies, salaries, taxes, and benefit repartition. It's like, it's like the weight of that uh, income is uh, after uh, given to workers, stakeholders, uh, taxes, and benefit repartition. It's, 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 it's not benefits. Now, from the Auditing point of view is important, of course, to see the calculator uh, and to trace back how this calculation has been made, uh, uh, how the value has been taken, uh, what is the source of this information, uh, how the costs have been have been taken in account, uh, and what are all the all the information that have been included, maybe on sales of sugar, ethanol, molasses, bagasse, power and the cost of goods, raw material services processed. So uh, all the information included in the calculator that have traceability uh, to real information in the company. We go now to uh, criterion 5.2. To reduce emissions and effluence to promote recycling of waste streams where practical. First indicator of two on this criterion, 5.2.1, the operator comply with point source air emissions legislations. So it shall measure and report point source emissions uh, and demonstrate, of course, that it complies with the legislation of PM10, PM2.5, SO2, and NOx. Uh, this is uh, uh, classical parameters for uh, boilers emission. From the implementation point of view of these measurements, it's important to, to, to be clear on that uh, parameters in the legislation, when to do it, how to do it, who can do it, to be sure that the person who do it have the material specific to, to make that calculations. Uh, make them in a, in, in a transparent way. Uh, uh, when the uh, government authorities, environmental authorities, comes to trace back this information, uh, and of course, uh, if uh, it allows for the company themselves to do the, the calculations and to, to contract specific companies that can do it and they have the credential to do it. From the auditing point of view, uh, it's important to see the permits, to be sure that the permits uh, uh, are in compliance with the law. Uh, to be sure that uh, the company have been done the 
uh, evaluations to allow that permit to uh, and to the company to 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 work. Uh, that legal requirements are uh, in accordance with that uh, measurements. Uh, and also to trace back that the company that made that uh, uh, evaluations are uh, allowed to do that and have the credentials to do that. The second indicator, 5.2.2, the operator recycles or safely dispose of non-production waste. For mill and agriculture, uh, minimum 50%, so the operator has a plan to implement recycling, reusing, safe and responsible disposal of storage uh, uh, for uh, a program for at least the half of the following categories, fiber, metal, plastic, rubber, wood, glass and electronics. So at least four of these need to have a plan of recycling, reusing, safe and responsible disposal. That information from the implementation point of view uh, is linked to the uh, waste management plan that have a characterization of all the waste and the sources in the, in the operation. Uh, of course, we need to identify that eight sources and to identify how to manage these products. Of course, uh, uh, they need some specific disposal uh, and some requirements to be sure that uh, that purse will be finally disposal. So storage and, and finally disposal of these uh, products uh, in this case. So the key activities that can help for the implementation of the plan are assess needs, minimize the impacts, order in bulk, repair products, sell unwanted items, repurpose raw materials, and education and awareness uh, to recycle in the source since the source and identify the actions and implement the practices in this case. So again, uh, come from the plan for waste management uh, leads to the characterization of the, all of these sources and wastes, uh, all the disposal of them, uh, safely disposal of this waste and after uh, the recycle, reuse or disposal of all of them, at least 50%. So to be clear, which of them can be done? Um, maybe or oh, yes. From the auditing point of view, it's important to see the plan, the waste management plan, uh, to see what products are in this plan, uh, to identify what infrastructure have the company to that, to interview uh, workers to be sure that they know uh, what to do with the different uh, uh, products to 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 resolve the risk or or manage. Uh, to see records, of course, of these disposals, to see permits of the companies that uh, are allowed to dispose that products, uh, or to see records of recycling, uh, uh, evaluating the volumes that have been identified uh, to, as waste or, or products or products, and that are also records of this recycling uh, done maybe by the company or with the communities, etc. Third criterion uh, is to train workers and other workers in all areas of their work and develop their general skills. This criterion has only one indicator, that is indicator 5.3.1. The operator provides vocational training to workers. So this indicator applies to the meal and agriculture, and the standard required is an average of 16 hours per year per employee of training, or equivalent for full time. So this indicator uh, requires that the operator provides an average of 16 hours of training for vocational and or occupational skills training to all workers. So it's important to remind here that uh, health and safety training are not included on this indicator. It is because health and safety training has been considered in another indicator under principle two of this standard. So uh, these training days are split between basic workers, intermediate management and upper management. So all these workers must receive training. 
And also a training plan should be prepared ahead of each harvest or cutting cycle. And for those cases that uh, the harvest or cut cutting cycle is not continue, actually, sorry, is continue, the training plan shall be annual. So this applies to workers of the mill and of the farm to, to, for the workers. Uh, that training needs to be vocational. We need to have records of this training. We need to have a plan to be sure that the training will be done. Uh, of course, to be sure that the trainers are competent, that the training is tailored to the level of the audience, and that all workers are given the same opportunity to access to this training. Overall efficiency of the training provided and records the total number of hours of vocational trainings to be sure that they are complying with the indicator and to include this indicator in the calculator. From the auditing point of view, uh, it's important to, to see the, the plan, to see how the company is following the plan, the records, to see how these records comes to a pre-documentation uh, uh, of the indicator in the input data, to see how it's come to the input data, and of course to be sure that the output data is correct. So. Uh, the access of training, also to evaluate you know, in the interview with the workers, the, uh, to be sure that who, what, which workers can go to who, which uh, uh, trainings, to be sure that there are equal opportunities to access the vocational trainings, uh, and to be sure that there are 16 hours per year per worker in average. And of course, uh, if there are certificate or proof of attendance uh, in this uh, information. We go to the last criterion of the principle five and also of the Monsoco production standard 5.4, continuous improvement of workers' welfare. This is the sole indicator of this criterion, 5.4.1, the operator promotes gender inclusion in management and skilled positions. For mill agriculture and the standard is 15%. So that applies to all workers uh, uh, on the Milan farms, including the unit of certification. And of course, uh, that the operator conducts a community-based women's empowerment training to, to be sure that they understand what, what this gender uh, inclusion means. Uh, the operator also increases women's presence in management and skilled positions uh, across the operation to meet the objective set in, in the operation of not less than 15% in this case. From the implementation point of view, it's important to know the United Nations Women, Women 2011, the seven principles. Of course, to understand what are the skilled positions, uh, to identify which positions are skilled and need to be uh, uh, to comply with this criterion, and this is a, 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 a process that needs to be the, the, the mill and the the, the operator. Uh, for example, supervisors are skilled positions, uh, but we are not talking about, about the oper operational positions. So to know, of course, the ILO uh, impact report and the guide on gender issues in employment and labor market policies to train the, the, the operators, the main operators on this indicator. So the process of the of the uh, auditor will be to identify what's the final number in the output data in the uh, in the in the calculator to trace back if it's correct and to see if the information included in the input data is correct which position have been included as skilled and to be sure that all the skilled positions are included that there are no exclusion of some skilled positions he also need to go to the field interview uh, with the workers to be sure that there is an awareness of the subject, uh, uh, interview uh, women in the, in, the, in the field to be sure that how, how, it, how it works, and if there is no compliance with the indicator to see what's the process and how the company is working on uh, to, to find a, uh, comply with this indicator, uh, how they are doing too. We arrive to the end of this presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. Please, if you have questions, please go to the Q&A sessions and or contact standards at bonsucro.com. Thank you so much.